You know what it's like. You've gone and built an Elementor website. Maybe it was for you or a client and you run a page speed test on it and your scores are coming out as over 90 for the mobile and the desktop. But you kind of feel that something is not quite right because as you're scrolling through the website, you start to notice a bit of lag or maybe something doesn't load properly or there's a bit of delay or it doesn't feel quite smooth. And then you go and check it on your mobile phone and it starts to feel a little bit heavy. There's like delays in how things are loading. But your page speed tool said you're over 90. So what's going on? Well, I want to break that down because this isn't about Elemental being broken. Elemental is not broken, all right? Elemental actually does a really good job and it has been massively improving in the last few years. And I'm gonna show you how you can fix a lot of these issues that a lot of people are still overlooking and how you could use a plugin called Airlift without breaking your design or changing the layout that you've spent ages perfecting. Now I've got an example homepage over here. We've got a header, hero banner, images, call to action button, statistics. We've even got a YouTube video over here. But I'm gonna point out some of the problems and what you could do about it and how you could use a plugin to help yourself out. We've got a slider over here. We've got some more images and we go on and on until we get to the footer. Now this is not a massive home page in case anyone wants to point that out in the comments. But regardless of that, would you agree there's more going on here than just a header and one single button, which is what a lot of page speed performance tools often like to show you. But I'm going to go a lot deeper. Now, don't get me wrong, because if you've been following my videos, you'll know that you could use code snippets or mess with the settings or maybe even install five different plugins to try and improve the score or the speed. But let's be honest, most of the time we either don't have the time to do all of that or we might just stick in a snippet without fully understanding, or we might load in a plugin and get some of the settings completely wrong. Or maybe you just relied on a video that someone did to say, hey, go and use this performance plugin. But did you really understand it and know what it was doing to your website? And sometimes what works on one website can actually slow down another. That is seriously frustrating, especially when you're juggling multiple websites. Or you've got a client breathing down your neck asking, why are things still slow? Let's do a really quick check just to highlight some of the problems. I'm going to right click and hit inspect. Go to the top, click the chevrons, and I'm going to click lighthouse. Let's go for the desktop first. Analyze the page load. The desktop score is coming at 91. This website has no code snippets, no page speed performance plugins. When we scroll down, we can see that the images take a little bit longer to load through. This is quite common with a lot of websites, but you can see here we're being told we've got to reduce the CSS, the JavaScript, largest contentful paint is taking a while to load up. I know it's only two seconds, but you know, these numbers can get massive if you're not careful. And what about for the mobile? The mobile score is not so great. and you. Can can see how the images are loading in and we have the same issues kicking in css javascript properly sized images next gen rather than just relying on page speed insight tools we're going to dig deeper so what we're going to do is right click while we're on the desktop and click inspect and along the top you will see network go and click that then ensure that you have disabled the cache at the very top. Just go and click it because we don't want any caching. And then I want you to refresh your page and you're now going to see everything that is loading through. And the longer you sit here, the more you're going to see things loading through. But what's really important is what you see at the bottom. So as of now, it's 146 requests. They are all the requests that are being made via your website to pull through what is present on the page. If you've got loads of videos, loads of images, loads of icons, loads of entrance animations and all the javascript that goes on behind the scenes they're all being requested and pulled over to your page and so far it's calculating that there's over 30 megabytes of resources to be loaded and so far well it was at 27 and it climbs up and even though it has climbed up and met it the number of resources to load for are now climbing again and that might kind of confuse you a little bit as to well it started off as a number why does it keep going up 
because there's other things at play that are being loaded through. Like I've got a slider. So every time the slider moves, it's having to collect a resource and it just adds in. Can you see that? The number jumps up as the sliders move. Let's try and make a bit of sense of all of the gobbledygook that you're seeing on here. I'm going to click IMG, which stands for image. And this is going to tell me how many PNG and JPEGs are coming through. I don't have a single WebP. Well, that was a big mistake, wasn't it? When I sort this into size, you can see how many hefty images are being loaded through. I mean, right down here, it kind of told us how big the website was in terms of resources. Imagine you're on a mobile and you're only getting like a 3G signal or you're out in the middle of nowhere or you really want to click on this website because you think it might solve a problem for you or you want to contact them. People will leave your website if it's taking a while to load through. Remember what it was like 25 years ago when we had ASDL modems and all of that and your images loaded up line by line? I know it's not like that now, but you don't want to emulate that situation. And if I do a search for YouTube, bear in mind, I have just one YouTube video here with the video widget. Look at what's happening over here. It is on autoplay, right? It does loop. But look at the amount of resources that are kicking in. And I made this mistake once where I used to have a page with about 20 videos on there and it took forever ever to load up and another point i want to make about any videos even though it's way down it's not even in my hero banner it will start to be loaded up into your page before you've even hit play and did you know that you will be pulling through all of the icons in the background from the library even though i only intentionally used one icon the star one over here and yeah i know it's only 104 kilobytes but these little things do start to add up. By now, you should know that WordPress creates a lot of duplicate images or versions of your images. 150 pixels wide, 300, 768, 1024, 1536. I could go on and on and on. And sometimes other plugins create other versions and other sizes as well. Trust me, it is a bad idea to have a 2048 pixel wide image loading up on your mobile when all you ever needed was it to be 300 pixels wide and yes you can use tools like bulkresizephotos.com to convert your images into webp or you could go and have a look at the pix refiner tool there's a link for it in the video description if you want to convert your images into webp and resize them and one of the things that is a real gray area is do you lazy load images especially if you've got sliders or a carousel gallery things like that it sounds like a great idea but if you imagine some of these sliders or carousels were right at the top in your hero banner the viewer might notice a jump in the layout or a delay with images loading up believe me if a certain effect requires the user to scroll a little bit to them them, it will feel broken and they may lose trust in your website now you could go to elemental settings go to the performance tab and where you have lazy load background images you could disable that or you could go and drop this code snippet in as well to eliminate lazy loading and i haven't even touched on something that a lot of you will not be aware of i'm talking about the zombie code did you know that when you uninstall some plugins there will still be a remnant of that present within your website. So I've gone and deactivated Elemental and Elemental Pro. I've gone back to my homepage. It's going to look ridiculously wrong now because obviously I've gone and deactivated the page builder I used to build it. Go to Network, refresh the page. And when I search for Elemental, you can still see that some styling is being brought through. Now, it is small, but... Did you know that eventually over time, if you're one of those people that likes to add plugins, deactivate plugins, you know, you, you keep chopping, changing, this will all start to add up. These are like the ghost scripts, the ghost code that stays lurking on your site. You could use a tool like Asset Cleanup to scan your pages and get rid of all of the unused CSS. But if you don't know what you're doing, you may accidentally do more harm than is good, especially when you remove an important bit of CSS or JavaScripting that actually related to something and you just made the wrong assumption. And I've been in that situation where you're doing a makeover for someone or you're redoing things on a website and it is so bloated with ghost scripts scripts because it's got a legacy of developers or coders or different page builds and things being added and taken out of it 
but it becomes so bloated in the background that you either have to completely reset the website or build completely from scratch with a fresh installation. Now, sure, I could sit here and tell you to go through image by image, convert everything to WebP, resize, manually check every font file, scan for unused CSS, defer to YouTube embeds, and a whole lot more, but honestly, that's your afternoon gone. And what if what works on one website does not work on another? And what if all of the fixes actually make your website worse? So here's something that you could use to help yourself out. Have a look at Airlift. Airlift is a plugin built by the same team behind Blog Vault and Malkin. I've done videos on those in the past and I really like their hardworking team and what they're doing in the background. I first came across Airlift about two years ago and I've been watching it quietly in the background and it's ready for me to tell you about it. What it does is really smart. It scans your pages and then it will find things like, are your images not WebP and should they be in WebP? Are you using certain icons and fonts? And if you're not using them, it won't load them through. And just going back onto the YouTube bit, what it does is it replaces the embedded video with a thumbnail preview. And I know you can do that in Elementor, but what this means is the users can still see the video instantly but the heavy YouTube player now only loads when they click. And that is a seriously good thing, because if you've got a page with 20 videos, you don't want them all loading until the user clicks to view them. Now, before I install it on this website, I always recommend that if you're using a code snippet or a performance enhancing plugin or almost any plugin these days, please make sure you test it on a staging site and make sure you take a backup first. But honestly, when I've worked on some websites where they've got tons of legacy stuff going on, in the background and they don't want to start from scratch airlift has worked really smoothly we're going to use the free version but i do want to clarify that if you want to scale up i would recommend you go for a bundle but what we're going to do is we're going to sign up the dashboard you get whenever you sign up for any tool by this team is pretty good but we're only going to focus on adding a website to use airlift so what we're going to do is click sites at the top and then click add site i'm going to go drop in my url you'll then have two options on how you install it you could enter in your username and password and then it will auto install it but if you want to be extra careful then just go and click download go back to your website click add plugin click upload plugin and then go and select that downloaded file and then it starts to analyze your website. Now, after about 20 seconds, it returned a score of 89. I think we had about 91 at the start so that's kind of in the same area for the desktop. And then it starts to work through all of the items that you have down here. It's going to look at the images, the CSS, the JavaScript, minification, all of that, the style sheets, the fonts. Does it need to do any conversions? But bear in mind, I am using the free version. Now, if you don't want to use Airlift, you could go and clean up your website manually. But if you haven't got time or it's a legacy website and you were not responsible for these issues or you've overlooked it or you completely ignored it, wouldn't you like to have a tool that actually sorts it out for you? And it's going to tell you what it did. And after a total time of two and a half minutes, this is the result. We've gone from 89 or 91 to 100. So here's the original page. And obviously everything is working as it should. Let's now view the optimized page. And do you notice any difference? Does it look the same? It does to me. But let's now have a look at some of the statistics. It was 4.4 megabyte before. It's now 2.8. So we've reduced by 36%. The amount of requests has gone down. Now, don't get me wrong. Don't go, well, I hope the 68 went down to 6. Well, I had quite a bit of stuff on that page. I had a slider, I had a video, I had things happening on there. So you're not going to like completely strip this down to be like 90% reduction, but any reduction is a big thing. And I want you to focus on the score at the top. But here's the bit I really like. Okay, WebP conversion done, image resizing done, images optimized. There were 16 in total on there. And we can see the size has gone from 3.1 megabyte down to just under a megabyte. Isn't it nice to have things spelled out to you like this on an interface? How many of you have used another page speed optimization tool and you tick a box and it says it will do X, Y, Z for you. And you go and check again on PageSpeed Insights or somewhere else. And the issue is still cropping up. But you just ticked a box and you were going on trust. Well, now I can see what is happening. And it goes on to the JavaScripting. We go for font optimization. And then we move on to the web vital improvement. Imagine you've got a client 
or a potential client and you're looking at their website or someone's reached out to you and they're a little bit worried about their core web vitals because they've read an SEO blog post about how you're going to fall down the Google ranking tree and they're panicking because there's loads of competitors. Wouldn't you be able to run something and you can now show them that your speed index has gone from 27 to 96? Your blocking time has gone from 90 to 100. And I can't blame Airlift for putting this down here for why they are better than other tools. I'm just showing you now the mobile is hitting 99. The score you saw on Airlift was for the desktop. But if you remember on the mobile, it was like in the mid 70s. We're now hitting 99. And you will see a major reduction in the amount of issues. Now, don't get me wrong. You will still have some unused CSS coming through. That will be down to the style sheet of your website. So you can't completely eradicate everything. But if I go back to the network and if I refresh the page, so we're looking at the network, the load is now 192 milliseconds. Sometimes it's a little bit less than that. We have less requests. We have less megabytes being transferred and loaded through. And if I click over onto image, you'll see that they've all been converted into WebP. If I do a search for e-icon, it's not showing up, but my icons are still present. Airlift is used by over 50,000 websites at the time of recording. And I really am going to be recommending this to people who I know have had issues with page speed performance and they've tried to improve their website. But you know what? You can add loads of snippets. You can use something that maybe I or someone else has recommended or say you need to do to maybe get your images to load quicker or to stop there being a bit of a jump or a lag on your website. But I seriously think you should consider using Airlift and you can try and install it for free and it will work. If you want to get more features, you got to upgrade. But I'm telling you now, you can use this for free. I'm Imran from Web Squadron. I care about page speed performance. See you soon.